Hey, and welcome back to the Little Brown Jug Show. And can I just say, I'm proud to live in a world where people can do this. Yeah, marching band are people too. Hey, and welcome back to another episode of the Little Brown Jug Show. I'm your host, Mikey Pedroza, and this is my vlog where I talk about all things swing culture and basically anything else I want to talk about. If you saw the last episode I uploaded, you know Kevin Stallorent. <laughs> Pose the question to you all to win tickets to Fog City Stomp in San Francisco, California. And I am happy to announce that we do have a winner. Congratulations to Jessica Southwell. You won free dance pass tickets for your entry of Frankie Manning is to Lindy Hop, what San Francisco is to the fabulous LGBTQ community. So congratulations to Jessica. If you didn't get a chance to enter this time in this contest, don't worry. I have plenty of passes to give out in future episodes. Maybe I'll even give one out this episode. You'll just have to wait and find out. But first, let's jump into our first topic. Brian Francois does a TED Talk in the UK. Now, to be completely honest, I haven't seen too many of these TED Talks before. I've seen a few here and there, mostly pertaining toward dancing. And when they talk about the dancing, they talk about how the internet or technology nowadays has helped further their dance culture. And in this TED Talk, Ryan says that exact same thing, how the internet and YouTube helped Lindy Hop and other swing dances push forward and evolve to a place where we are now. He goes on to tell everybody some of the drawbacks of having the community online and showing all of these video clips, old and new, on YouTube, and how he fears that some of the individuality and personality is starting to be a little bit lost, and a lot of the dancers are starting to look a lot alike. Now, this is something I think about a lot as well. I look on YouTube and I look around the world and I see a lot of the similarities in everybody. And I do tend to think that a lot of that comes from the sharing of videos from YouTube and Facebook and other social medias. But I don't know if that's the whole truth. We can't deny the fact that there are a ton more workshops, camps, and festivals than there were 10 or 15 years ago. And a bunch of people taking lessons offered by teachers that have spent the better part of those last 10 years forming and cultivating their own ideas on the dance. And I feel like a lot of the dancers have exclusively subscribed to one teacher's way and opinion of the dance and only goes as far as that teacher goes. In some ways, that kills creativity and the individualism of the dance. I don't see you dance. I see the person you're trying to be. And so I feel like Lindy Hop could end up looking the same from dancer dancer all around the world. But on the other hand, if everyone starts looking the same, then dancers that are putting their own ideas and personality into the dance will be easier to see because they are breaking the mold and getting a whole new level of dancing on. So if you have the time, check out the clip. It's amazing. Ryan talks about a lot of the different swing outs that people were doing back about 10, 15 years ago when everyone had their own idea of what Lindy Hop was. Now, having been around during the so-called style wars that I really tend to think about only happened in Southern California, really, I got to see these clashes between what was called modern Savoy style Hollywood style and kind of what they were doing to try to kind of be like Frankie and how each individual one of them said this is the right way no this is the right way no this is the right way on one on two on three and a half I think the one positive thing that came out of these style wars is that we all kind of agreed to disagree and then just started dancing together and now we have this amazing modern Lindy Hop that we do today that we're taking and doing something with. I'd like to send a shout out to Remy, Mo, Tony, and Irene, some amazing dancers out of the UK, Greece, France, and Japan. The Frankie Manning Google Doodle. So you know it's coming, the Frankie Manning Centennial in New York, May 22nd through the 26th. We were all there during that big rush to get the tickets to go, but did you know there's this big campaign for Google our overlords and masters, to add a doodle on their front page of their search engine 
on Frankie Manning's birthday. Now, what is a doodle? It's when Google changes their logo on the front page of their website to celebrate holidays, anniversaries, famous people in history, the lives of famous artists, pioneers, scientists. So why not have a doodle for Frankie Manning? I know most of us have tried this before, but it is the 100th birthday of a legend to a lot of people around the world. So I think, why not? Let's try again. So if you have a little extra time, go to Frankie100.com, check out the sample letter, send it via email to the people at Google, and let's try to make this thing happen on May 26th, 2014. I just sent one in, and I plan on sending a couple more before the end of the year, and then until they decide to do this, because I feel like Google owes me one. Now on another note, I've heard people have started scalping tickets to Frankie 100. Now I'm not gonna tell you it's wrong, I'm not one to tell you that, but maybe do it a different way. Hold a dance contest and the winner gets these tickets. Or maybe go online and have a, a trivia contest. So if you have an extra ticket out there, or you're planning to sell these tickets, by all means, if you need the money, hey, who am I to say no? But you know what? Maybe try to do this the other way and see if people can win into this because everybody deserves to go to this Frankie Manny 100. It's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be huge, and we're all just trying to get in there. One on one interview with Evita Arce. Do you know who Evita Arce is? Well, you should. She is literally one of the mascots of Lindy Hop. The most happy go lucky, amazing, talented little ball of energy that you will ever see. Nicole Lenzen at NicoleLenzen.com recently sat down on an interview with Evita Arce and asked her a bunch of different questions about where she grew up, her inspirations, her new dance troupe, Syncopated Rhythm, blah, Syncopated City Dance Company. Now I'll let you read most of the interview. The link is down below in the description. But some of the things that stood out to me in the interview were when she was asked if she wanted to become a professional dancer, she said she never, ever, ever would have thought she would be a professional dancer. She thought she was too short or too round or too not like the model of a professional dancer. Now coming from another person that is short, round, and not the model of another professional dancer, I find this very inspiring that she also went through that same idea. But at some point, you break through those barriers. You just keep doing it. And you find out that if you do what you love for a long time, it just takes over, no matter who or what people say. She also talks about her approach to choreography and what she wants to do with Lindy Hop today. She loves the theater. She comes from a theater background. She wants to add props and characters into her Lindy Hop performances. Towards the end of the interview, she starts talking about her new dance company, Syncopated City Dance Company, who she started with, Michael Jagger, and of course her other dance partner, Nathan Bue. Syncopated City preserves the energy and excitement of vintage partnered and solo jazz dance while blending the forms with contemporary movement and music. The dance company has already performed in amazing places like the Kennedy Center in DC, Jacob's Pillow, and also Nathan Bue will be performing on stage at Carnegie Hall with old school dance partner, Josie Say. So go check out their Facebook like page, like it, and you'll find out more information about this syncopated city dance company and where they will be performing in New York City or anywhere else around the world. Definition of swung over. One, adjective, the mental and physical results of binge jitterbug. Two, noun, a blog of random swing thoughts and stories by Bobby White. If you don't know who Bobby White is, he's an amazing dancer who teaches Babo all around the world. He also has a blog at Swung Over. The man is an incredible writer, and he wrote this blog post that really piqued my interest called Swing History 101, The Birth of Lindy Hop. He goes into the history starting from the 1900s and ending around 1929. He talks about how the music happened first and the people followed suit with the movement. How ragtime music turned into hot jazz music in the early 1920s and helped cultivate what we call the jazz age. How everybody from the poorest of the poor to the richest of the rich were doing the Charleston. He also goes into one of the more famous stories of all Lindy Hop, how we got the name Lindy Hop. Now I'm sure you've heard it, but I'm going to repeat it really quick just for those who don't know. The story goes that in 1928, Shorty George Snowden was dancing in a dance marathon and as the hours kept going on, he was doing crazy stuff. So much so that in the late hours of the marathon, a reporter asked him, Hey, what are you doing there with your feet? To which Shorty George said, Why, it's the Lindy. Now it's important to know 
that he didn't say Lindy Hop. He just said Lindy. Charles Lindbergh had just hopped the Atlantic from New York to Paris, and a lot of the newspapers were saying Lindy hops. But a few years back, I remember listening on a lecture from a professor named Richard Powers. During the lecture, he stated one of his theories as to how Lindy Hop became the term we use today. He started to say a lot of the boys back then would catcall to a lot of the females in Harlem. And one of the most famous names to call a woman you didn't know the name to was Lindy Lou. Hey, how you doing, Lindy Lou? Hey, Lindy Lou. Hey, how you doing there, Lindy Lou? So his theory about the name is it's the first part of that, Lindy, and the dance they were kind of doing, Lindy Hop. Again, it's just a theory. But to me, the Shorty George story romanticizes the whole idea of Lindy Hop. So go check out this blog post by Bobby White over at Swung Over. The link will be down below in the description. I love comics and superheroes and origin stories, so here's your question of the day. If you were to create an origin story for Lindy Hop, what would it be? Be as detailed or not as detailed, make stuff up or check out history things about Lindy Hop and throw them in there and see what you got. And to the story I like the most, you'll be winning a free pass to Inspiration Weekend, February 28th through March 2nd of 2014. So get to thinking about your origin stories about Lindy Hop and throw them in the comments down below. I'll read them, I'll pick out a winner, and I'll let you know next time. Oh, and a quick shout out to all my friends at Southern Fried Swing for officially making a day named after me in Fort Smith, Arkansas. September 28th, 2013 is officially Mikey Pedroza Day in Fort Smith, Arkansas. So thank you everybody at Southern Fried Swing. I had a great time out there. You have a great community. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, hit the button down below. If you still want to subscribe, hit that button or leave a comment down below. I want to see some origin stories. I want to see some crazy ass things. Let's, let's make up some stuff. We're really good at that. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Oh. Oh. I can't bend that low anymore. My knees hurt.